Alright, welcome back to Shaving Fuzzy. I'm Fuzzy. How y'all? So it's uh, Friday afternoon. Yes, the schedule originally said work Friday off Saturday, Sunday. That changed to work Friday night, Saturday night. Here we are. So we actually did a Williams Wednesday video. We were making it in something, you know, technical difficulty, I call it. And I ain't explaining no further. But anyway, so today we're going to go back and we're going to do a Williams shave on a Friday. And I had already decided to make this Williams Wednesday a two-sided thingy shave. I don't do that very often. But every once in a while, and kind of a nod to you two-sided thingy people, I do one. And today's your day. So we're going to use Modern Williams. We're going to use a big old mega bore brush and the B400 handle that Tom machined. And uh, we've got really good coffee today. I had picked up some, uh, make sure I got this turned right, French Market. And it's coffee and chicory. And yes, everybody hates these little cups. They are now making them recyclable, which is a step in the right direction. But still, these plastic cups, there's a lot of waste. And I understand there's a lot of waste. And uh, yes, I hate myself a little bit every time I use one. But I still use them occasionally for a quick cup of coffee. So this is actually number two for the afternoon. But anyway, so it's really good coffee. It's coffee, chicory, no need for the cream, no need for the sugar. You know, all that girly stuff. Gonna drink coffee, drink coffee. So uh, Modern Williams, and we're really beating this cake down. And, uh, you know, I'll put another one in on top of it here before too long, because it just so happens I have plenty of Modern Williams laying around this place. So a razor I haven't used in a while, and I don't see a lot of people use. Uh, it's a 40 Super Speed, but it's the black tip. And this was supposed to be the mild one, I understand. And no, I take that back. I used to think that's what it was. So I was actually told that the reason that this had a black tip on it, and I'll have to go back through the comment section of some other videos maybe. But uh, anyway, or Ron to come back and tell me again, because he's the one that knows these things. They, were, they made them out of, what, plastic? And it was, uh, you know, cheaper to make or whatever. But anyway, my understanding used to be that these were the mild razors, and then that was changed, but it's kind of found out it's not the mild razor. They just made it out of something different. Anyway, it goes, these are generally very good shaving Gillette razors. Not only that, but it is very true that a lot of times when you say vintage old safety razors, these are what people think of are the old clamshell doors on top of the Gillette because they did, of course, such a good job of marketing. They won the marketing war, and they won the war, period. So everybody thinks of these and not, you know, real razors just say it so anyhow there you go so that's what we're going to use and i was digging around for a blade and i've got some of these assured blades you know they come with the uh the dollar razor that you get at the dollar tree the gillette clone and uh you get five of these and a razor for a buck so anyway there was some laying around and uh hey, well you know i'll use one of those assured blades razor to razor blades to blades as long as it's sharp it'll do great and uh in all honesty, I've had several shades with these blades and that dollar razor, and uh, I haven't had a bad blade yet. So now that I've said that, I probably just jinxed myself, and this will be a very bad blade, but oh well. I've done worse. All righty, so we do have, you know, enough growth there to work on. You can see it, and we're going to uh, gonna work on that. So we were talking about brush size the other day. It's been a topic with me lately, and uh, that's the big Omega. Now, that's about as big a... A bigger knot, as I used to say, would be a big brush. Now, I have a couple of brushes that are bigger than this now, but this is the Omega. I think it's the 90. I, I can't remember the numbers on it anymore. If you'll remember, here a while back, I unboxed a box of stuff, and I couldn't lay my hands on it before the video. I was going to get it out, but it had that red-handled Omega brush. That's the knot that comes out of those. They come in those really cheesy plastic handles. People are busting them out of the handle and putting them in the hand-turned knots, and that's what this is. Uh, this is a knot that was machined by Tom uh, T. White. He called it the B400. This was one of the prototypes, as I recall. And uh, he actually made it with changeable ferrules so you could have three different brushes. And this one, the ferrule all seized up and all on it, so it's just the one. And uh, I'm still real happy that he decided I was worthy of having one, you know, at some point along the way there. So anyway, that's today's shave. So we're going to start out with doing our prep work. Now, I was talking or, or texting the other day with a buddy of mine, one of my shave buddies. Y'all know him as Ordinary Shaver. And... Uh, he was looking at, so he sent me a, a link to something where somebody on eBay, I think it was, had replated a razor and were just asking astronomical amounts of money for it. Now, the funny part about that is, hey, let's just go ahead and talk about all the good things I think about replating razors. Well, now that we're through with that list, 
what's, and I've always said this, I never have light replating razors, and what's going to happen is somebody that's new to the new to the hobby or somebody that thinks they're one of these really fancy people and have to have all the shiny new fancy toys because it's better, you, 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 know, you, you know who I'm talking about, right? We'll see that, and they'll go and spend a bunch of money that they don't need to. The truth of the matter is you can find these old single-edged razors. That was a, a, it was a 1912. I mean, they're a dime a dozen. And you can find them if you're a little bit patient and hunt around. You can find them look like they just left the factory. Really, they did such a good job plating those. If you want one that's got a really, really, really good finish on it, find a British model. The Brits were really putting good finishes on those razors back then, better than the Americans, I think. But uh, anyway, even just the Americans finish, you can still find them pristine. They're perfect. Uh, mint, whatever. So these people, they go and they take these old razors and they plate them. And then what really burns me up, I don't care if it's a two-sided thing or what, what really burns me up is they go and they start plating them in stuff they were never plated in. I mean, you know, put lipstick on a pig, she still ain't your prom date. Let me rephrase that because I've seen some prom dates sitting around. Anyway, you know, put lipstick on a pig, you got a pig with lipstick on. You know, that's just all there is to it. So they go and they start replating these razors and all kinds of other stuff, and it's like, really? That's just silly. Of course, that's a personal opinion, but, uh, you know, it's my YouTube channel, so my personal opinion counts. But anyway, so he was looking at that, and they wanted a fair chunk of change for that there replated razor. And I'm just not, I've never been a fan of replating razors. Even razors that do look a little rough have a little character to them. I prefer to use them that way instead of replating them. I don't see, I just, you know, that's just me. I used to watch these uh, before I turned my cable off because it got to be so expensive keeping cable. I told the cable company, I said, it's not whether I can pay for it or not. I said, y'all charge so much money and there's so many channels I don't even watch. I don't feel the need anymore. So I got me one of those digital boxes on my TV and I can watch local channels. And amazingly enough, I get to watch a lot of this stuff. Anyway, though, back to what I was saying to start with. I used to uh, watch a lot of these car shows where they would, uh, you know, counting cars and all this kind of good stuff. And I was watching the show one time. Okay, this is the uh, black tip and it's got the assured blade in it. Black, these, these razors, these 40 style super speeds, there is nothing wrong. There is nothing at all wrong with how these old razors shave. I mean, really. It's just not. So anyway, back to the car show. They were, they were taking the old cars and instead of particularly uh, redoing them, they would they would sand down or whatever the finish that was on them, and they would keep the patina. They would just put a clear coat over it, so it would be this look like an old rusty beat up car, but it would have the clear coat and have a you know it wasn't going to rust out on you. I always thought that was the neatest idea to actually have an old car that looked like an old car, but that was you know protected, it ran good, and. Uh, I don't remember which show I saw them doing that. It was pretty darn neat. So you go and they buy these old razors and they go and they either replate them in something that they never were plated in to start with, or they go and they freshen it up and make them all shiny like that's going to help them shave. And people eat that up. And I've always been a big fan of getting new people into the sport here into the hobby but you know the new people come in they don't know a lot about razors and everybody was talking about these shiny replated razors and they'd go spend a whole bunch of money getting a shiny replated razor and they didn't even know what they were doing yet or how to do it and you know most people don't learn to drive on a Porsche or something along those lines. You know, mostly you learn to drive on Dad's old Buick. I did. 73 Buick. Skylark, if anybody really concerned about that. But anyway, and, uh, anyhow, they go and they spend all that money to start with. 
Because we always used to make the joke about getting into this hobby to save money. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work. Once you got bit with a razor bug and getting collecting razors and brushes and all the suds and I mean technically you can do it with one razor and blades get you a brush and all you have to do is every once in a while replace some soap and razor blades you can do it but I got into it it ended up being a hobby and that all went out the window I got like 200 razors or more and uh, you know all these brushes and soaps and creams but anyway Yeah, once in a while people start talking about replating raiders and it just kind of gets to me. Especially on eBay and stuff there. They uh, just always feel like they're trying to take advantage of people that don't know better. And then you read some of the descriptions in the eBay ads and you can tell they ain't got a clue. I saw one the other day that was for a dime razor, which I kind of want. Someone was talking about it over on... Uh, Toast, you know, it's T O S T three, toast three dot com. But anyway, a dime razor. And I think uh, I think they were saying you can modify a gem blade to fit it. But anyway, and uh, I was looking on eBay at them, and they had them ranging in price from about forty bucks, something like that. And then all of a sudden, somebody jumps into one with hundred and eighty bucks because they think they got something. Didn't look any better than the 40 bucks ones. I mean, they got the, the what is it, they got a lithograph, the tin container they come in, lithograph. And it looked good, but so did the one on the one that was 40 bucks. But anyway, people just kill me. People just kill me. People always, some people think that their stuff is just better than everybody else's stuff because it's there and they take better care of it and it looks like this and I've done this with it over the years and I've done that with it over the years and they don't realize most people don't care. You know, I've had this car since it was brand new. I'm the only person that ever drove it. I've kept it up, yada, yada, yada. It's still just an old car. But anyway. It would matter to them because it's an old family car or something like that. That's what would matter to me. But they think that increases the value. How much is it worth? Whatever I can talk somebody into paying for it, right? It's a great American way. I'm okay with that. All right, put a little witch hazel on here to finish. And you'll see that there blade and that razor has done a good job. The uh, These Gillettes... I need to do my family shave again. I do it every once in a while. I've got my granddad's 1957 uh, Gillette Super Speed flare tip. And the only thing I've ever been able to find wrong is just missing one of the end caps. And missing an end cap does not in any way have anything to do with the quality of the shave. And then I've got my other granddad's uh, Surrey Bore Shave Brush. And I've got a shave mug that actually came from a great uncle of mine, one of my mom's uncles up in uh, North Mississippi. But every once in a while I break everything out and have a family shave day. I need to do that again before too long. Always really neat. And I was thinking the other day about maybe doing some camping this summer and I got to thinking I've still got a camp stove, a Coleman camp stove, that was bought in 1957. Came from my grandparents place. And uh, so that's pretty neat stuff. I bought a, a conversion kit part so that I can change it over from the old liquid fuel to a canister of fuel and I may not even use that. I may just use the liquid fuel. Last time I was able to oil the oil rings and I was actually able to pump it up and get it to light with uh, with the Coleman liquid fuel in it and that's actually pretty neat. So uh, after shave today you might be wondering what we're going to do. I think I said the other day my brothers picked me up some Master Bay Rum and the Master Bay rum is actually a more of a pure bay rum scent. It's not real strong. It's not real. It's not clovey. It's just bay rum. It doesn't have all the clove and scent in there. And some people like that. Some people don't. My brother found out when you drop the bottle, it breaks. So what he did, he had an empty Dr. Tishner's bottle, and he put the rest of it into this Dr. Tishner. Now, if you never use Dr. Tishner's, you need to try Dr. Tishner's. It's great stuff. But that's a whole nother video and a whole nother show. But uh, anyway. I've been smelling it and I can't smell the Dr. Sisters. I don't know how he rinsed it out and got it to do it. So all I smell is the master bay rum in here. And again, it's not a real heavy bay rum scent. It's a very clean bay rum scent in my opinion. 
and it brings back some good memories. It's amazing how scents are kind of like music. They'll bring back memories. I used to go to a barber shop, and I may have already told this story. I went to a barber shop when I lived in Greenville. It was a barber shop I got my first haircut at. And uh, my mom had a picture of me sitting up in the barber chair. I don't know, kid. You know, first haircut, high road I was. And I made a copy of that picture and took it back to that barber shop and put it up on the, the, the cork board in there. I need to get back. It's the Palace in Greenville, Mississippi. I don't even know if it's still open. It hadn't been back in years. I need to go back and find out see if my picture's still up there. But anyway, he sold Master Bayron. And he sold one other, I remember it being a lime of some kind, but I haven't, I don't know what it was. I don't remember. So anyway, this is when I was living in Greenville and I was running a security company. I was married at the time. And, uh, and anyway, so, you know, the master of Bay Run, Marvin, thank you. Appreciate you bringing it to me. Uh, he found that, I believe, at his barber shop. Uh, he had sent me a picture before. His barber shop's got stuff in it. I'm actually, next time I'm in that part of the world, we're going to his barber shop. But anyway, uh, they sell the Master Bay Rum, and it just brings back a lot of good memories slapping it on. It really does. It just amazes me how sense to do that sometimes. So anyway, that's our Williams Wednesday on Friday shave for today. And, uh, you know, my thoughts on it, if you're thinking about refinishing, replating a razor, don't. But that's just my personal thought, and, you know, that's just how I am. That's what you get here is my thoughts on subjects. So there we go. So, uh, yeah, uh, the leaf twig. I'm going to mention it real quick because it's actually an interesting looking razor that I'm really seriously considering getting one to try out. I may start saving my pennies. It looks like they're going to be about 60 bucks. And uh, I may start saving my pennies and, and get a leaf and try that out and see how I like it. I don't like a lot of the modern stuff. I do tend to like the razors that use the still use a gem blade. Uh, you know, uh, the ones that use the feather blade, I'm not real big fans of the feather SE blades. They do work. I use them in, you know, um, I use them in. And some people, while we're on that subject, some people wonder what's the difference between the blades. Now, this is, this is one that's been sitting around a while. Anyway, this is a regular gem blade. It's got the spine on the top. And the feather SE blade does not have a spine, and it's got cutouts in it because the uh, auto strop, uh, the valet auto strop razors you had to have, they made it so that you had to have those blades with a cutout so they could sell their blade proprietary, and that's how they did it. So, anyway, just a quick little thing there. So, I prefer the razors that use the regular gym blades, but one uh, shade razor, they're not bad. Single half a DE, like the twig, is not bad. I've got the Challenger here that does that. I've got uh, shavettes that use, shavette styles that use the broke blades, so, you know, they're not so bad, it's easy to get blades. I understand where it's coming from, so I may actually do that, so we'll see. All right, well, I got to go finish getting ready for work. I got some clothes in the dryer, I got to go get them out and take a shower and get finished for work. Y'all have a great day, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Thanks for listening to an old guy of Babylon. Appreciate all the new subs and all the comments. You know, all you six or seven people, I think we're up from two or three to six or seven people that actually watch the videos. Hey, we're doing good. I appreciate you guys and gals. We'll talk to you later.